Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tanti Rights. Today we are going to be doing a little review of The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones and at the end I'm also going to unbox this paper gown box just to finalise whether or not I need to cancel my subscription. <laughs> so, this book. It's another one of those books that I've fallen completely in love with due to it hitting so many of my niche interests. Um, there's a tough grave digger girl, a soft mat maker boy who can never find his way and their undead goat and they're adventuring through mountains and folklore to face the curse of risen corpses and long hidden truths about themselves. It's a story about folk tales and magic and family and undead corpses. My first love about this book is the setting, partially because it's something that's very familiar to me. This book is set in this village within a forest where the people have let history die because they no longer believe in magic. There's a lot of Welsh influences, I'm pretty sure it is just a fully Welsh folklore retelling. <coughs> but these very specific Welsh influences and the folklore are a perfect choice for a horror or a horror influence novel. As I've grown up near Wales and spending my childhood hearing about all these like ghost hauntings and supernatural sightings, and other assorted spooky stuff felt right for Wales. Um, it was also wonderfully atmospheric. There's the remains of a once glorious kingdom, a small village haunted by the past, and decades old curses lingering in the woods. My second love is the folklore, and I've had a fixation with folklore, and more recently local folklore, since working on the UD project this year, and this book appealed to that niche interest also Taylor Swift folklore and also Welsh folklore. I love reading about tales that are already so close to my heart and I love that specifically Welsh folklore is getting some very well done representation. So when you read about folklore in a lot of other books, the most popular ones are back here, my Percy Jackson Shrine, you get a lot of Greek retellings, you got Song of Achilles. There's a lot of also more like Eastern European influences but the specific Welsh very good. Also, if you're doing like an English folklore retelling, I'd recommend like Dartmoor and the Moors in the Southwest. Very good content. I didn't expect to love a story that's about, in extreme summary, zombies so much. But the author did such a wonderful job of showing them through the perspective of myths and legends, and also removed a lot of the horror elements surrounding zombies in some places in the books. So it created something that felt like it could have had a place in a fairy tale rather than a nightmare. And it's also exciting to see how well urban tales and folklore mix with the horror genre. My third love are the characters. And this is like a... It, I couldn't tell if this was a perk or a flaw at one point. Because the book is very plot driven. And it's about specifically the folklore and the history. So in some places the characters did feel a bit two-dimensional, they were just vessels to hold this story rather than playing more of an active role in it. But I did change my mind in the end. I feel like they are good characters and they're interesting characters more importantly. So Rin is the grave digger girl. Rin is the grave Rin is the grave digger girl, it's short for Adarin. And when I picked up this book I was like, oh, one of my work in progress characters is called Rin. How does she know? <laughs> So Adarin is this grave digger girl, Ellis is the map maker boy, and they complement each other very well, surprisingly well I think, because Rin is straightforward and stubborn and confident, and she's very fiercely loyal to her siblings. I originally wrote family when I wrote this review, but no, it's her siblings, her remaining family. She's also described as fearless and a girl who will chase death into the mountains with only an axe for company, and I love her for that. <laughs> Um, Ellis is sometimes overshadowed in action scenes because Rin is so much, but yeah, he's not an extremely powerful character physically, but he has a very strong emotional side and his loneliness and loyalty and his suffering do not make him weak. One small thing in this book that meant a lot to me is that Alec has chronic pain, I think specifically in the shoulder, but it can flare up everywhere else. And he's also still has this chronic pain by the end of the book, which um, injuries tend to do that in fantasy. They tend to disappear by the end. And as someone with chronic pain, this was um, very special to me. 
and the author talks about the toll it has on his body throughout the book. It's consistently there, it's not just picked up for key plot elements. And it is wonderful to see a character who can live with this pain and still go on adventures and he's not a burden to anyone else. I originally rated this book a full 5 stars, mostly because it hits all my niche interests. But then I lowered my rating to 4 stars after some thought. I found the last 100 pages or so kind of repetitive as it, ke it keeps coming back to the same folktale and repeating it and it's like it's retelling a lot of information. I guess not in a foreshadowing way. I read somewhere that you have to tell a reader something three times for them to get to the point and she really did tell us three times. But yeah, there were some bits that was very repetitive. Some of the plot points became predictable. But as this was so near to the end, I didn't really care too much. And also it became more focused on the romantic elements, which felt kind of out of place on the specific journey that they are and that point in the book. However, I am very much excited and looking forward to Emily Lloyd-Jones's next book, which I believe is called The Drowned Woods. And if that goes well, I can see her becoming one of my favourite authors, like all-time favourites. So I gave this book finally four stars <laughs> but I did give it five stars I made it with a 4.5 rating but we're going to settle with four stars but it's, it's still very good no matter what flaws I have with it the last box I had with this was like an average is up here it was very underwhelming it was just a patterned box with like some envelopes and some note paper and can you see Oh, and stencil, I forgot about the stencil. It was just like paper. It's a box of paper. The one box before that was pretty good. The one before that was the worst box I've ever done. So we have mixed hopes about this one. This box, they also did not release a single teaser for it because apparently they did a poll, which I did not see, and I'm a subscriber. <laughs> They did a poll asking people if they wanted to see. They got the Brexit result of like a 48, 52%. 52% of people didn't want to see what's inside the box at a time. Even though you had to click specific links and go onto YouTube to see what's in the box. So they decided to release this one with no teasers at all. Um, and then they deleted a lot of negative reviews they got for past boxes and then they deleted all the comments saying please show us what's in the box. So I don't have a clue what's going on with this one. My little skinny arms can't do this very well. I also struggled last time. So what I can see straight away is... This lighting's horrible, we're going to put it down. We have... A holographic sticker. It's okay. We have... It's a planner but I hate the texture that it is. Um, it's, I guess it's like a linen wrapped kind of thing. It's like... When you take the cover off a hardback, that feeling, but slightly rougher, and ugh, it's very pretty. It's a very pretty sunset theme. Um, it's got like a to-do list and a timetable on every page, so I probably won't use this because I'm not a planner person. But first of all, I won't use it because I hate the texture. Second of all, it's too plannery, less notebooky. Um, we have some. What do these say on it? make it happen and have a nice day we've got some holographic pencils cute um we have these like s sticky note tabs which are, are quite cute i'll give them that we've got a little bag paper clips we've got like a black regular silver then we've got some of these oh they're purple there's also some blue ones okay we've got black silver shiny purple and shiny blue paper clips. I think they put a type in the booklet saying there were 60 paper clips but it's actually 40. And then we have an art print. The print is cute. <laughs> so this is probably still in the, um, it's, it's a mid-tier paper gang box. Why is it so dark? It's very mid-tier. The best boxes they've done are like the three around the time I subscribed, which was the Space one, the November, I think the November one that came after it, and November's the Christmas one. The October, September, 
and November ones were the god tier boxes. Then they went downhill. Now I think they're trying to claw their way back up so I think they've lost a lot of subscribers. But overall this is an average box. I will use some elements of it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cancel my subscription now because it's at the point where the contents of the boxes are getting repetitive. And as it's things that I don't always use, I have so many shiny pencils. <laughs> So thank you all for watching this video, a reminder that this was about this book. If you've read this book, please let me know what you thought about it. If you've got similar recommendations of folklore retellings, please let me know because I would love to read more. But overall, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!